In a recent project, I used the filter function to get a list of invoice numbers. I then used text join to get a comma separated list of those invoices. I then went to spill my filter function over lots of criteria, but yet it created an error. How can we spill our filter function over multiple calculations? That's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here in Excel, you can see the example that we're working with. It has two tables. The first table is called POs. It contains a list of PO numbers and the values related to those PO numbers. The second table is called invoices. It contains a list of invoice numbers, which purchase order numbers, those invoices relate to, and the total value of those invoices. From these two tables, we've created a short report. It shows the PO number. So this is a sorted unique list from our PO table. We have the PO value. This uses the sumifs function to generate the total value of those POs. We then have the invoice value. This also uses a sumifs function, but takes the values from our invoices table. Finally, we have a variances column. This shows the difference between our PO value and our invoice value. Now these are all created from dynamic arrays. So if we were to create a new PO number, our report would expand accordingly. Now, all we want to do is to create an invoice list. So to list the invoices that relate to each PO number. So for this first line, PO0001, it should list invoice 01 and invoice 04. This sounds straightforward. So let's see how we do this, but also how we can easily run into problems. So let's start by creating a single filter function in cell M2. Equals filter, open bracket, and we want to filter on the invoice number where the PO number is equal to I2. We'll close that bracket and press return. So it now spills invoice 01 and invoice 04, which are the values we would expect to see. Now we want this as a comma separated list. So let's use text join. Text join, open bracket, the delimiter is comma space, and then ignore empty and enter true for that. And then we have our filter function. We'll close the bracket on that and press return. So we now get those two values in a comma separated list. Dynamic array values spill, don't they? So that means all we would need to do is change I2 to I2 hash to pick up the spill range of our PO numbers. I press return. Oh, it returns hash NA because we can't spill multiple filter functions. So we really need to come up with a different solution to solve this problem. We're often told that we can't use a dynamic array formula inside a table. Well, actually we can, provided that dynamic array formula returns a single value. So if we take the formula that we have in cell M2, I'm going to select all of that, press Control C to copy, and then we have an invoice list column in our POs table. I'm going to paste in that formula, and rather than referencing cell I2, we're going to reference the PO number. I press return, and now that calculates correctly. Invoice one and invoice four, invoice three, two, five, seven, six, and eight. So that means that inside a table, the filter function calculates multiple times, once for each row. So how can we apply this inside a standard cell? So we're going to pick up where we left off in cell M2. We've seen that we want to perform a calculation for every row. We can't spill just using that filter function, which means we can wrap our current function in a lambda function. The first argument is a parameter. Well, we have a parameter that we want to calculate our filter for each row. I'm going to refer to that as R. Then we can't use I2 hash. We're going to use R as the element that we're matching against. 
then we will close that bracket. At the moment, we don't have anything that spills. So let's use the by row function. By row, open bracket. The first argument is the array that we want to use. Well, that's i2 hash, comma. We then have the lambda function, and we can then close our final bracket at the end. I press return, fantastic. We now have those values spilling as standard cell references. So if we want to perform multiple filter functions, we can do that inside a table, provided that table returns a single value in each cell. Or we can use this by row and lambda combination so that it performs multiple filter functions. The by row and lambda combination solved the problem that I had in my project. We had a filter function, but ultimately by using text join, it was reduced down to a single value. However, in your scenario, you might have a filter function that is returning multiple values. If that's the case, we can't use this by row lambda combination. Instead, we can use a drop, reduce, lambda and vstack combination. And there's an example of that in the blog post. So please follow the link and you can find out more advanced methods of stacking filter functions. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.